So it's been three and a half years since I fell off a horse training to become a jockey. And I'm still in a wheelchair. They told us that she was a complete tetraplegic, which means that there's no messages coming down from the point of injury. It's been a busy three years. I've had heaps of opportunities come my way from my injury. Paralysis just kind of brings a whole new life. Maybe because of my disability now, I have more opportunities to help people. And I know that I can make a difference. When you've had such a big injury, it's probably better to be too resilient than not resilient enough. My independence has really grown over the last few years. I can do a lot more. Physically, I'm a lot stronger now, so I'm more confident to push the boundaries and do things that I thought I would never be doing post-injury. Yeah, emotionally, I'm pretty much the same. Nothing really bothers me or gets to me for too long. Like if I'm upset about something, I'll just be upset for a little bit. So don't expect any changes with that. I was out on the track with the horse and then he spooked at something. He bolted and I couldn't hold him back. And that's when I fell off and broke my neck. Yeah. I think it fell off here. So the horse broke that, or I broke that? You broke that. You're doing amazing, Sarah. After the accident, I was forced to relearn some of the most basic things. Oh, you're so pleased with yourself, aren't you? Well, so would you if you didn't have hands. <laughs> She's not here. <laughs> Everyone in my family had to make big adjustments to help accommodate my situation. OK, burger toppings. Cheese. Mm -hmm. During lockdown, we cut down my carers. Mum, she was doing everything, and then every second night I had one of my other carers come in to help me with my personal cares. Basically, COVID-19 happened and it was all in the declaring pandemic stage. When I went through in my mind how many carers you were exposed to and then how many clients they had, mm. it just was in the hundreds and then the thousands of people that you were exposed to through your carers. And and that's when I just made the decision pretty much within 24 hours that we as a family would go into lockdown. That six months of nursing school's really come in handy. Oh, I know. I'm glad I did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely been trying to take the workload off her by doing as much around my house as possible. So there's lots of cooking and cleaning that I can do myself. So I'm definitely getting a little bit more skilled throughout this period. Come on, get up. Get up, Martha. You're in the way. My energy levels are OK. They're definitely less than that of an able-bodied version of me. But it's good. I'm getting better. I used to get tired really easily. So I've just really got to think about my energy expenditure and sometimes think about whether I want to spend my energy doing the house type stuff that day or accessing the community. These are really good cups for quadriplegics because they don't smash and they've got a handle and they're really light so you can just drop it, 
throw it around. Don't put it in the microwave. <laughs> if I could go back to the start of coming out of hospital, straight after my injury, I definitely would have taken more control over my carers and made sure that I was getting paired with suitable caregivers. If I had younger caregivers looking after me, then I'd feel more comfortable being out in the community and being seen by the public. There's a connotation when you see a young person with a disability walking around the shops with an older lady who's obviously being paid to look after her. Um, yeah, it can really take your confidence away from you. So now that I've got lots of young girls working with me, I'm much more confident doing stuff in the community. Paralysis just kind of brings a whole new life and new opportunities, different opportunities. Navigating life as a young woman with a disability can have its challenges. But I think if you stay open to doing things you hadn't considered before, it can be just as rewarding. Some of the things I've done in the last year include modelling for an inclusive Kiwi fashion website. I did New Zealand Fashion Week. I've acted in a TV drama. I was in an inclusive adventure tourism documentary where we did some crazy stuff. And I found a boyfriend. Oh, my dad was going on. Oh, bring your dad in. His name is Trap. Yeah. He's from America, so he comes over to New Zealand. I've been to his place in the States. James is always like, I wonder if Trip actually did get the biggest salmon of the year. One of my first fears when I had my injury was that I was unlovable. So it's really given me a lot of confidence. It's definitely taught me that a disability does not stop you from having a relationship. When I first had my injury, I looked to social media to see if there were young girls with disabilities in relationships. Pretty much all I could find was young boys with disabilities in relationships. So I kind of did feel a sense of responsibility to put a positive relationship out there on social media to instill some confidence in young girls. So it's been a busy time and lots of opportunities have come my way. I'm just saying yes to all of them and trying to figure out what I want to do with my life by having as many experiences as possible. One project I've loved being a part of is All Is For All, which is an inclusive fashion website which was started up by my good friend Grace Stratton. This year we'll be taking 11 models to New Zealand Fashion Week to be cast in shows. We were like talking about Sophia, about her loss of function, and then she goes to us, oh, but I can still pull the finger, watch this. And so she used her mouth to pull up her middle finger and we put it on video and used that as one of our campaign ads. And the, the caption that we used with it was, anybody who thinks that disabled people can't be in fashion, we have this to say. I started off doing some modelling for her website with Kiwi designers and then somehow they managed to convince me to do New Zealand Fashion Week. Do you have good pork and top? Yeah. I can say uh, you show off, just because uh, some of us are blessed with abs. A group of 12 girls from Grace's agency, we had to audition a few weeks before the Fashion Week started. So it was this huge room full of all of these, you know, models. And then there was this group of us disabled models. And um, I mean, credit to all of us. We all did the walk and half of us got picked. So I think we represented. People with disabilities aren't really included in the idea of fashion. 
to be able to be involved in making it more directed towards people with disabilities is really important. So I went a bit fast, but I've never practiced, so it could have been worse. I could have spasmed. Half of us got some bookings. So there was a bunch of us wheelchair users and girls with other access needs walking in Fashion Week for the first time in New Zealand, which is obviously iconic. I don't feel prepared, because I've never done this before. It's good knowing that there's 11 other girls that will do it with me. I'm not nervous at the moment. I will be. Not now, though. <laughs> so actually, you're going to stop. stop. Yeah, because can you feel there's a light? And you can kind yeah. of feel, you want to be in the middle. So when you're rolling down, sorry, I'm moving you, and I hope you don't mind. It's okay. You are coming down. See this middle line right there? Able-bodied models fear falling over, but I'm fearing spasming down the runway. I mean, it, it'll suck if my leg spasms, and then it pops out in front of me. Then the shoe will fall off. But. <laughs> I've been taking my anti-spasm medication, so I'm not expecting that to happen. Maybe don't do that on the way, but you can try not to. <laughs> Grace got disabled people into New Zealand Fashion Week for the first time ever, which is huge. She's done a lot of good work, and it's being recognised internationally, and I'm really proud of her. I think she's a powerhouse. <laughs> She's had to organise like makeshift ramps and everyone is aware of our needs, so it's very different to what the fashion world is used to. <laughs> disabled people have a part to play in the fashion industry. I think that lots of girls in wheelchairs think that they can't be models. If they want to be a model, then they can look at me and see that it is possible and that there is a growing market for disabled models. Am I in my comfort zone? No. <laughs> but do I mind being out of it to help other people? Not so much. It's, it's good to be able to help people. I think when you have a spinal cord injury and your whole life changes, it's really important to find something to replace what you used to be able to do. I'm a pretty content person with where my life is, but it's definitely important to have some hobbies. I'm not sure if I've always been into plants, but it's something I can do now, so it's just kind of something that's gotten a bit more familiar. I think I've learned quite a lot about it. These are my succulents that I propagated from other succulents that had gone a bit crazy. Yeah, you just cut it off and then let it callous in the sun for a few days and then plant it onto a, a wet soil and then it will grow roots and become new plants. Because I can't feel my fingers, so I can't feel the moisture in the soil, and I can't extend my fingers to like go deep into the soil. Um, so this tells me how damp the soil is, which is quite helpful. I really enjoy it, and it's something that I can pretty much do completely on my own, depending on what I'm doing. Um, like I did all of this by myself. So it's nice to have that ability, and it's rewarding to see it grow. A lot of the time I've got downtime, which is good because then I can, you know, use my time to practice my independence. You just figure out the weirdest things when you're home for ages. Like, I never knew that I could pin my door back, which meant that I never used to go outside by myself because the door would close behind me 
and I can't open the door from the outside. It's a very long time. Now that I know that I can pin the door back, I can come and go freely from the house now, but that's only just been in like the last eight weeks that I've learned that I can do that. My other cabin is where I go to stand. I have my standing frame there and all of my medical supplies. All of the physios that I've talked to have said that the people in chairs that are the most physically healthy are the ones that stand as much as possible. So if I can stand as much as possible, I'm gonna do it. But it's really good for your bone density. And, you know, there's no point in having a cure for spinal cord injuries if your bones are just gonna crumble underneath you. So I do try to stand. It definitely makes a difference. It's just hard when, like, my body's spasming heaps. Um, but I find that, like, the more I move throughout the day, the less spasms I have. So if I'm kind of getting in and out of my chair lots and moving around and, like, picking things up off the ground, then my spasms are definitely not as bad. Hopefully I'll get to the stage where I can do this um, faster and easier, but I've noticed a big change in my transfers a few months ago. Um, but I can even get into this. I found it really hard, so now that I can do it by myself is good. And sometimes I'll text mum and I'll be like, I'm getting into the standing frame by myself. If I don't text you in 15 minutes, come save me, because I'll be on the floor. But this never happened, so it's good. I've never fallen. I've never fallen. I'm so good at transfers. More and more, I'm being asked to raise awareness of disability, which I feel is really important and something I'm happy to do. I did a discussion about living with a disability, which was actually really interesting because I think the theme was growing up with a disability, and obviously I didn't grow up with my disability. So it was quite interesting because I have a really different perspective on a lot of things compared to someone who grew up disabled. Sophia, what would you tell yourself um, when you first had your disability? If you could give advice to them now, as someone who's grown, um, what would you say? Uh, it's really important to get involved in the community which understands you, uh -huh. because they'll help you make that progression into the, the life of living with a spinal cord injury. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that if you try to do it by yourself, it's everything's going to be harder. You don't know what you don't know, so you don't know what's available to you. Yeah. You just really need to use all your resources. Yeah. <laughs> Meme is something that I never thought I would do. It's a New Zealand web series that I was asked to audition for. I got an email out of the blue from the director, JJ, and she was telling me that they were casting for a 16-year-old paraplegic girl. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I'm 22 and I'm quadriplegic, but I went and I auditioned. She called me and she said that they decided to use me, and I was like, are you sure? Are you qualified to do it? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> well, I'm very dramatic, but I'm not an actress, so I was pretty surprised to get that. Good day, everyone. We just want to do a director's rehearsal now. Sophia, if you could come down Ooh. here, we're going to start you just, just, over, just over here on the side, so after she's gone in... It was very nerve-wracking for her, the first time she's ever done an audition. Three of us in the room staring at her, asking her questions, reading against me as well. I think we came out of it going that we definitely could push her to a level on set. Cut! Cut. She could take the stress and she could take the pressure. And she worked really hard, she knew all her lines. She did amazing. Breathe. Action! Are you freaking dead? 
No, I'm disabled. Cut! That was good. Cut. That was good. That was cool. Great. Moving on? Yeah. My character was a kind of like insta-famous YouTube personality, so I had to learn the lines of eight vlogs. I'm getting more of an idea of my character. So when I'm supposed to be a little bit mean, when I'm supposed to be nice. So it's making more sense in my head. And I definitely think that the more I do, then the more I'll understand the character and then need less direction, I think. But I don't think I'm doing too bad. I'm doing all right. Okay, let me just catheterize myself and then we'll get that uniform straight on you. Well, I'm sorry? The logistics of having a quadriplegic on set were challenging. I've sort of had to think about having a bed for her um, at each location. So luckily at the school we have a sick bay where she could go and get changed and we have two people helping her, wardrobe and makeup. We're just gonna make sure she's always got a robe when she's not shooting. Oh, sure is. Yeah. I had a big chat to the directors about being aware of her levels of tiredness. She gets really tired quite easily. She was travelling all the way up from Bombay, so thinking about call times for her. I stressed to my AD that I would love to have her shoot in the afternoon onwards so she doesn't have to come up so early. Uh, is there enough room for you to come in? Maybe I can move it back. Was that, was that holding you? Uh, it's holding you. Her body doesn't work the same way as everyone else's and they knew going into this, this is the actor that we want to work with and we're just going to make it work. It's pretty cool how they used a genuinely disabled person to play a disabled character instead of a able-bodied actress in a chair. <laughs> I think it was 10 whole filming days, and they were big days. I had to put a lot of work into it. But we got there, and it was really fun, and I really enjoyed everyone that did it with me. Are you freaking deaf? No, I'm disabled. Oh. Um, I didn't realise this was a... Sorry, Sandy. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sandy. So there's been a few changes in my life. Trip and I broke up, um, which was just based on career things and coronavirus and stuff. So, yeah, we broke up, but come to terms with it and I'm just taking all of the good from the relationship and being really grateful for what he brought into my life. Well, it was my first relationship as a disabled woman and, yeah, I was really scared that I wouldn't be able to find um, a meaningful relationship with my disability. So I come away from that relationship with a lot of confidence and hope. I know that I can, you know, bring a lot to a relationship. And I'm very lovable. What I'm really looking forward to now is putting my energy into helping out my super special friend Georgie, who is really unwell. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. How's your health? Um, not the best. Given a little bit less time than I thought I had left. So I need some help with some bucket listing adventures. Georgie has just been put into hospice care. She has this disease where her body's just won't absorb any nutrients, so she's slowly kind of just shutting down, I guess. I've been trying to get really involved with helping her to develop a bucket list. So I've made lots of contacts with people that I've met once or never, and yeah, just taking advantage of everything that I've been exposed to. 
to help Georgie's bucket list actually be cool. What's on your bucket list? Top one is maybe, you know, just seeing you again. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> um, second one, skydiving. Skydiving? Skydiving. Yeah. Do you know anyone? I think I do know somebody. Yeah. I think so. Okay. I'm pretty sure I can sort something out. Got some contacts. Got some contacts. Got lots of contacts. So I'll see what I can do, eh? All right. Thanks. Are you going to do it with me too? Are you medically cleared to skydive? Yes, I've got the all clear. So we'll put you on the most dangerous plane? Yeah, let's do it. Anything that makes me feel alive, let's go. Maybe we should do heaps of stuff. Yeah, what do you got in mind? I don't know, I think, I feel like I've got quite a lot of contacts and I'm just getting all of these ideas coming to me. So I think I'm gonna send out a lot of emails and just get okay. you so many opportunities and then Put them out in front of you and you can just say yes or no. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, no, that sounds perfect. But I don't want to wear you out. Oh, mate, I'll just like have those like rest days and we sweet. You know, you only live once, let's just go and do it. Blitz, this is so exciting. <laughs> I'm so excited as well. But you've so, got to join in, you've got to join in some of them anyway. I mean, yeah, we'll see. We're in this together, girl. <laughs> no, we're not. Yeah, we are. <laughs> can you roll fast? Uh, faster than you can run. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, it is. We'll see what happens. She's being dealt a really, really tough hand and she's coping with it amazingly and I want to be a part of that and help her to live her best life. And it makes me feel good to know that her last months can be improved by something that is being facilitated and pushed by me. I really enjoy making a difference in people's lives. I'm definitely noticing that all of my opportunities are kind of going towards a world where we promote normalising the idea of young people with disabilities. So I think that that's somewhere where my life will go. Maybe because of my disability now, I'm in a better space and I have more opportunities to help people. I'm just gonna take advantage of that and help as many people as possible. Thank you.